but the call is made, and now Haydick with a quick restart, trying to catch Chicago with numbers still up the field. Moreno's touch. Gavin went down. Terry Bonds running in. Is it for a chat or for a card? Uh, it shouldn't be a yellow. It's an innocuous challenge. They it, it just kind of they connect. You know, his, his heels are just picking on cigars as they're crossing over each other. It shouldn't be a card. I mean, it's a foul. No reason for the yellow. Free kick, though. That's the other bad part for Chicago, giving up a set piece. For the Columbus crew, last two years they've scored 18 goals off of set pieces, tied with New England for the most. Before Scalotto got here, they were second to last in the previous two years. So he's been a good difference maker. Well, this is the difference too. He, he can provide the service and, and the players are in the box. Scalotto on the ball. Now swinger away from John Bush. Hooks it up there. Marshall at the crossbar and in. It's time. Well, this is exactly what the fans wanted to see, and that's the combination right there. Something that I was talking about in the first half. Chad Marshall was getting the better of McBride on these set pieces. There's the great camera work. And he gets behind and then comes across the front. Nothing that John Bush can do there. Really, Chad Marshall works hard to win that. Great service from Scalotto. The teasing ball. The probing ball. And Marshall does the rest. And there's Ziggy Schmidt. There's his reaction. And the set piece plays off for the defender of the year, Chad Marshall, and they're back in it. Chad Marshall scored four goals during the regular season. They were all off set pieces. He gets another one here tonight. This one, you might say, is his biggest one of the year. Evans going in between to share that responsibility. There's Brad Evans right now trying to cover. As Blanco avoids the two, the double teaming. That's amazing. He got that ball through. But if you watch Blanco, you know he can do it. Many times. This is going to go wide of Hesmer. It's a 1 1 game now. Let's get an update from Alan Hopkins on the sideline. Alan. Thanks, JP. Well, I talked to Siggy Schmidt just before the start of the second half. He's very calm, very composed, even down there, even though they're down a goal. He said, we have to do a better job of pushing the attack higher, getting Robbie Rogers and company in behind Roman Conde. He also said, chance here. Got it! Oh, he picks him up! Two one. Well, Alan did a good job there. Just laying it out as the play develops, and he actually shouts it as the ball is lifted over the top. Moreno battling against Conde, and then we see Bukari Samari with Scalotto, and there's another flick in behind him. He continues to run Eddie Gavin, and here it is. Look at it. This is even a better angle. See the diagonal run from Eddie Gavin. He's not picked up as he gets in behind. Cigares was with him initially. Then he goes to the left back position to pick up on another player, Moreno, and Gavin is free. So Columbus, good finish, good finish yeah. though. Kept it hard and low, good technique. Good finish yeah. though. Kept it hard and low, good technique. Tough year for Eddie Gavin with all the injuries. He'll forget about those injuries if that turns out to be a game winner tonight. Now, the game changes again. Yeah. Now, where Chicago is yeah. down by one. I don't think that's the last goal we're going to see tonight. As we took another look, take another look here, Eddie Gavin brings this ball down, gets his hips across over the ball, and gets it tucked within the far post. That's the celebrations from the coach of the year and his staff, and the crew are on top. But as I said, I still think there's a lot of football to be played here. We won't hear the whistle. That's it. Columbus goes out of the World Wars Cup 2008.
you played here for this franchise, so you know what it means to them to get the MLS Cup in 2008. It's been a long time coming, JP, and of course, uh, you think how close you get sometimes throughout a season to getting to the playoffs. They were unable to get to the playoffs over the last three years. Now, not only do they win the Supporter Shields this year, the number one team winning 17 matches, they also now have themselves in the final a great result tonight and against a very good and talented yeah. Chicago Fire team that has done so well. You talk about Dennis Hamlet, you talk about Ziggy Schmidt, the coaches, Dennis Hamlet taking over this team from Juan Carlos Cesario, and he's done well, but some credit has to go back to even to Dave Sarakin, because probably eight of the players yeah. that were on the field tonight were part of that team under Dave Sarakin, so a good Chicago Fire team, yeah. and a very organized and a very good and disciplined Columbus crew with victory tonight, and it means a lot to this this franchise, to Clark Hunt and the family, put so much into this. Had to go downstairs to all this bedlam, I believe Pedro Gomez is down there somewhere with Ziggy Schmidt. Pedro. I am right here with Ziggy, a very obviously happy Ziggy. Ziggy, what was the difference in the second half, the way you guys came out those first 10 minutes? Well, we just felt that we needed to get behind their defense, we needed to turn their defense. Play balls in behind them. Robbie needed to play higher. Gavin needed to play higher, and that's what and that's what we did. What does this mean for this franchise? Uh, it's a tremendous a lot because of everything that's happened in the history. Keep losing to DC United in final games to finally get to MLS Cup is tremendous for the city. There was a little bit of a spat there between you and John Bush. What happened there? I just wanted to congratulate him on having a great season, and uh, he decided to use another word. Uh, all right. Eastern Conference champion Ziggy Smith. JP, back to you. Thank you, Pedro. And Ziggy's won it before the 2002 MLS Cup, so he brings that experience. And I would think at this point, Johnny doesn't care who he plays, whether it's New York or Real Salt Lake. He's just worried about his own team, and they have taken that next step. Absolutely. And uh, full credit to the crew tonight and Ziggy Schmidt and his staff for such a good job of changing this team and developing it and basically tearing it down and restructuring the players. Only three players, like we said, when he first took over. Uh, you know, you look back at Ziggy Schmidt and how well he's done. You talked about the championship he has won in 2002. But also in 1999, you know, with LA Galaxy, when he was removed from that, they were the number one team in the league. So he's done so well. Sierra missed goal of the game. Has to be Eddie Gavins, right? It's a game winner. Well, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> it's going to have to be now because it is, but it's a ball over the top, and it's an important, crucial game because it is a game winner, but just the way it was created and the run from Eddie Gavin, it's good to see him having more confidence to get forward. He's healthy. He's feeling good. You talked about him being in the league for six years. He's only 22 years old. Let's see how good he feels because he's downstairs with Alan Hopkins. I think he feels very good, JP. Eastern Conference champion Eddie Gavin. What happened on the game-winning goal? Well, I just came to my foot, and I just kicked it in. <laughs> That's it. What about this year for this franchise? When did you know you had something special going? This team has just been awesome this whole year. Guys have just fought for 90 minutes every single game. The win feels so good, but we still have one more in front of us. What do you think is the most exciting part about playing in the MLS Cup? Just being there for the first time, I think, and just going out and trying to win it all. But congratulations. We'll see you down the road. Back to you. We talked about this before, John. These two teams are so evenly matched, strength versus strength. I'm not sure what the weaknesses were in these two teams, but for me, the difference was home field advantage for Columbus. That's the only way I could separate it. If this game is in Chicago, I think Chicago's favorite. It's in Columbus. Columbus is I agree. And, and there wasn't a lot. In terms of the matchups, it was very good in terms of the balance on the field. The center backs are out there marking down the strikers, but the home field advantage tonight really got them going. Chicago comes out and scores early, but they rebound. And this is the resilient, resilience, I'm sorry, of a Columbus crew team under Ziggy Schmidt. They really fight and they battle and they never give up. Well, their team MVP is Guillermo Barra Stilotto.